Hi, I'm Carmen, and today we're going to make tear trays out of plates, cups, saucers, and other items you may already have on hand. I encourage you to shop your own stash for these projects. Look through your cabinets, your neighbor's cabinets, your your family's cabinets to see if they have any odd or mismatched plates, cups, and saucers. If you don't have the materials in your cupboards, uh, you can always shop thrift stores, dollar stores, and even department stores for plates, cups, and saucers. Thrift stores normally have good prices on mismatched plates and you can usually get the materials that you need for about $5 to make a tear tray. This stack of plates is a little expensive to me for a thrift store, but you could make two tear trays out of this stack. Once you've collected some odds and ends, let's get started with project number one. For project number one, we're just going to keep it real simple. We're going to pick out some plates, cups, and saucers that we think match and look good together and we're just going to glue them together. There'll be no cutting, no painting, we're just going to stack them and glue them together. You're just going to move your plates and cups around to see something that you like. Um, for me, I'm not always sure I love something, but I definitely know when I hate something. Um, so that gets some things eliminated for me. And I just keep moving things around until I get a stack that I like. You're going to need some really good glue for this project, something that glues glass together. Um, so you'll want to read the label on whatever tube of glue you have and make sure that it glues glass together or ceramics. Um, I like E6000 for this project or clear silicone. Um, I'm more partial to the clear silicone. It's a little messy, but it gives a really good hold. Here I came up with this grouping. I really like the blue plates together and the polka dotted plate. They all come from different dish sets. They're just odd dishes that I had. And then there's a little glass that I've turned upside down in the middle and a salt shaker that I've added to the top. I'm going to put this arrangement on top of that white cake plate that you see in the back. I really like it elevated. I'm not going to glue it because I sometimes use the cake plate. This by far is the really easiest project. You're just stacking and gluing your objects together. For this tray, I glued together a green plate, a striped mug, and I had a little saucer on top that my kids and I made at a paint your own pottery place. And then on the very top is a squirrel salt and pepper shaker. When gluing glass to glass, I would not recommend using a hot glue. Um, unless you want it to be a temporary hold. Um, the reason that I say this is because the hot glue, if you're using hot glue and another glue that's for ceramics, you're actually taking away space for the regular glue um, that you really need because you're not gluing a very large area. The best thing to do is really to use a glue that's for ceramics or glass only and uh, put your tray in an area where you don't have to move it, where you can glue it and then just leave it for 24 hours. For this tier tray, I did something a little different. I put the biggest plate in the middle. Um, I tried it on the bottom, but I really didn't like it on the bottom. It just, for me, worked in the middle. I really like this tray the way it is. And really, when doing this, it's all about what you like. Part project number two. Project number two, I shopped the dollar store and I got a plate, a saucer, a bowl that all matched, and two mugs. This project is just as easy as the first project. You're just going to stack these and glue them all together. And voila, you have a beautiful and fun tear tray. I love making these seasonal tear trays. They're so cute and great for entertaining. If you make them out of regular dishes, they are food safe. And although I'm putting wrapped candy on this plate, you could put cheese, crackers, sausages, cookies, whatever you like on these. Project number three. 
For project number three, I found some plates at Goodwill. They were very inexpensive and I'm going to combine them with a couple of candlesticks that I have. So for this project, you're going to need two plates that are different sizes and something to make a riser um, in the middle of your tear tray, something that's going to be at least six inches tall. I didn't have exactly what I needed, so I'm going to put two um, candlesticks together to get my riser. I didn't like the color of the candlesticks, so I'm going to spray paint them um, with a little bit of spray paint, and then I'm going to paint over it with acrylic paints. I glued the two candlesticks together and then I dry brushed them to bring out the texture of the candlesticks. If you're going to glue two candlesticks together, I would suggest gluing them together and letting them dry overnight and then the next day or 24 hours later um, gluing them to the plates. It'll just give you um, a more stable um, condition to work with. Project number four. For this project, I went to the dollar store and I picked up two pie tins and a toilet plunger. You will need a drill and assorted drill bits and you will need two dowel screws that will fit in the center of your dowel and also a screw for the bottom of this tray. Now you don't need to buy the toilet pop plunger if you have a dowel that's about an inch thick or you have like a table leg or chair leg or a piece of a railing you can use that for the center of this project. You need to get something that is about an inch in diameter that's wood and about a foot long. I priced dowels at my local hardware store and they were much more expensive than a toilet plunger at the dollar store so I ended up getting the dollar store plunger. To start this project, you're going to need to mark the center of your pie tins, and you just need to mark one on the bottom. Next, we're going to drill a hole in the center of our pie tins, and you can stack the pins on top of each other to do this two at a time. Um, also, you want to prop them up, put a block of wood under them so you don't drill through your table or bend the pie tins. You just want to drill a very small hole through these two pans. Um, to start, it's going to be a starter hole for our screws. If you need to, you can go back and drill a bigger hole in one pie pan for the dowel screws, but this will give us a good alignment for our center. For the center dowel, I cut a piece that was six and a half inches long for the bottom of the tray and four and a half inches long for the top. And the four and a half inch piece I cut from the top of the toilet plunger because the one end was, wasn't so flat. Next step is to drill a hole in the dowels so that you have a starter hole for your screws. And you'll wanna pick a drill bit that is slightly smaller than the screws that you'll be using. So for these um, dowel screws that I'm using, they're kinda of chunky, um, so I'm going to need a bigger hole than I would in the bottom of the tray where I'm gonna use about a half inch long screw. You will not need a hole in one end of your four and a half inch piece. Whatever uh, end that you decide to be the top handle, the very top of the wood handle for this tray, you won't need to drill a hole in it. For the bottom of your tray to hold your dowel in place, you're gonna need a screw, and it needs to be about a half inch to three quarters inch long. It, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, and a washer, I like to use a washer for this project, and you'll need that for the bottom of your tray. Once you get the screw through the bottom of the tray, you're just going to screw on your longer piece of dowel. If you cut it to six and a half inches, you'll screw this piece on. In your smaller wood dowel, your four and a half inch piece of wood dowel, the one you're going to use as your handle, you're going to want to put one of those screw dowels. And you want to use something 
um, to screw it in a quarter of a way to halfway into the dowel. Now you can take the top handle dowel, your four and a half inch dowel, you can put it through one of your tins and then you can screw it into the dowel below. only thing now left to do is to give this some kind of feet or um, bottom so that it doesn't wobble. Since we put the screw through the bottom, it's uneven. You can make feet for this project using the leftover piece of dowel we have from the toilet plunger, or you can use wood beads or wooden blocks. Project number five. For project number five, I bought a plate, a saucer, and a bowl from Walmart. They were very inexpensive. I used a 26 inch long piece of dowel that was three quarters of an inch wide. If you wanted to use a toilet plunger from the dollar store, you would need to pick up two for this project. You'll need to cut your dowel. Um, you'll need to cut three six and a half inch long pieces, a three inch piece, a two inch piece, and a one and a half inch piece. And I would recommend for safety, like always cut your shortest piece first, just so your fingers will be out of the way and you'll have plenty of dowel to hold on to at the end. I painted all of the dowels navy blue to match the rim of this plate. And then I glued the three longest dowels together and the three shortest dowels together. Next we'll glue and wrap some twine around the three long dowels. When you're finished gluing your twine, you can start gluing together the components of your tear tray. If you're using E6000 for this project, I would put these two pieces together and let them dry um, upside down this position overnight before going any further. When you're ready to glue your center post in place, you'll want to make sure you have the center of each plate marked. Um, it's really important when you're using such a narrow column in the center of a tear tray to get it as perfectly centered as you can because it'll look a little um, lopsided if you don't line things up right. To your tray off, you'll just want to glue your three um, little dowels together and put some um, twine around them and then just make sure you have them centered and lined up with the bottom posts. And that's it. You end up with the cutest little nautical tear tray. Project number six. For project number six, you're going to want three plates that are different sizes and two spacers. Here I have a wooden candle holder and then I have a small bud vase that I've primed with white primer. And my plates are different sizes and different textures. For this project, it doesn't matter what color your plates are. It just matters if you like them and they vary in size. We're going to paint them all the same color so you won't see their original color at all. I got these plates at Goodwill and also the wooden um, candlestick at Goodwill. I really don't remember where I got the bud vase. I've had it quite a while. Picking out plates and, and the spacers for this project, just look at what looks good together. Play around, stack your plates, see if you like it, see if the spacing is right. We are going to spray paint all of these items the same color. And I used a flat black for this project, um, but you can use any color that you like.
So the paint that I think is the best for these dishes is uh, spray paint that is flat or is a primer. And the one I used is a primer and it's a flat paint together. Uh, it stuck very well. Um, I would also suggest many, many light coats so you don't get any runs. You could glue all these objects together and then spray paint them, but I thought it would be easier to do each piece separately and then glue them together. I really like how this black flat paint turned out. Um, this tear tray would have to be my favorite out of these projects. I just like the way it looks a lot. Once you have all of your parts painted and dry, it's just a matter of gluing everything together. For these plates, I must have painted five or six coats of black paint. I did them super thin and they really did turn out nice. I didn't get any drips or runs. Um, the center plate has a texture to it that you might have seen in the video. Um, there were flowers painted on the plate and they kind of had a texture. And you can still kind of see that, but it really doesn't bother me. Um, I kind of like the center plate being different than the other two plates. Here my uh, tear tray is glued and all together and I really love it um, and I really had fun decorating this tear tray. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing and please comment and let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Thank you very much.